And welcome in to another week of Yellow Jacket Football. I'm Kay Crenshaw, joined alongside Allen Head Football Coach Teddy Keaton. Coach, thanks for sitting down with me this week. You're fresh off the 35-27 loss at Tuskegee that came down to the final few minutes in the fourth quarter. What did you learn most about your team? The resilience, the ability to fight. We were down 21-7 at one point in time in the ball game early. They never gave up. They kept fighting. They just played the game. We talk about it all the time. Just play the next play. Play the next play. Um, I talked to the coaches about not trying to get it all back in one chunk because then you out throw the game or put yourself in a bad situation. Just take the game as it come to you. Drive the ball down the field. I think one of the biggest surprises is that we had like four drives where they were like eight, nine, ten plays long, and it showed me my quarterback was growing to manage the game and take it and keep moving the changes, and it helps the defense get a break. Let's focus on your quarterback. Sophomore David Wright the third. He's completed 61% of his passes this year. But coach, you go back to last season. He's the top passer in the SIAC, over 2,500 yards through the air, 24 touchdowns from as a true freshman last year to what he's doing this season as a sophomore. How have you watched him grow for your team? I think he's grown tremendously. Turnovers is one of the factors that I've noticed. He hasn't turned the ball over. I don't think he's thrown a pick yet. Um, he's fumbled the ball one time, but that, you know, the ground happened for him, and you know that happens in the course of a ball game. But as far as his management of the game, he's getting better. Um, he knowing what down and distance it is. It's third down. We're just trying to move the chains and get a first down, so we get another opportunity to you know get a set of downs. Um, I think he's doing a great job at that. Um, he's growing as a leader. I think the players are rallying behind him, and they are understanding that he is QB one. He's the guy that's going to lead us, and, and a lot of things that's going to happen. The success and failure of this offense is going to fall behind him. As you watched him mature, what's been the biggest development in his leadership? His leadership, his ability to be able to get the kids to buy in. Um, sometimes, you know, you have this thing because he has a group of teammates that he's played with for a while. They end up getting a lot of throws, and uh, some of the other kids may think that they're not getting the ball as much, but it's a, about what you do. Um, how they execute, how they move, the chemistry that they have developed with each other, not just from high school, but over the years. Um, so it was important to put people around him. And now the other guys are starting to understand that I got to work at that level and I got to know what he's thinking so I can put myself in position to be able to catch balls. And as the game has progressed along, as the season's progressing, we've seen those other receivers kind of show up. You see Bobby showing up now. You see... Um, Moon got a touchdown this week, uh, Montreal White. And then you got uh, Ruffin, who caught two big passes in this last game. So they're starting to develop as people and, 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 and as teammates and trying to do things as individuals so they can help the team collectively. Wright completed 31 passes on Saturday at Tuskegee to seven different receivers. Coach, you touched on it. So many weapons for your offense. You've been also on the receiving end of that, trying to coach against that That's at right. times. From a defensive standpoint, what type of challenges are you giving your opponents? Oh, that's a lot. That's a lot to cover. I don't care who you are. I mean, when you got a running back as Bo Harrington that can come out of the backfield and catch the ball, and you got seven or eight wide receivers that could be starters at other places, that would help. You know, most teams have one receiver that's pretty good, or maybe two. I mean, but to have four, five, six, seven. That's a lot of weapons to be able to stop, and, and it exposes defensive backfield uh, because if you try to lock one down, you got to you know account for the other ones. Um, it's just, and he does a really good job of distributing the ball. And and, and and you know one of the things in the offseason we talked about was taking what the defense give you, and he's done a really good job of that. You know in cases we fight about some things that he could have did better, but he's not perfect. So I try to you know even though I'm still searching for the perfect play. Um, I give him a lot of credit that he's probably one of the better QBs. I know the ones who hear this, you know, I've coached some really good ones, but he's probably one of the better ones in, in terms of trying to be a pure athlete and do the things he does with the ball. One of the top targets on Saturday in Tuskegee was redshirt freshman Armani Harris as he reeled in 11 catches for 145 yards and a touchdown. Coach, this is a player that you kept hidden away last year and trained behind the scenes. What did that red shirt year for him last year do for him and his success? I think it did the same for David. They got a chance to watch. When you're a true freshman coming to college, you don't know what you're going against, the mental preparation for a game, the physical preparation for a game. I've always knew Amon could run routes. I knew Amon was good. Um, I coached his uncle at Stillman, so I kind of understood who he was as a person. 
and to develop him into the person he's coming. I can't take credit for that. He's just a pure dog. I mean, he's a guy who wants the ball. He catches it. He's one of the only few receivers that love to go across the middle of the field. That's the first thing. And he's a little bitty guy. And I, it kind of caught my eye that he was – he would go across the middle of the field and catch the ball and go get it. So I was kind of happy for him there. Armani Harris, David Wright the third, just two of the seven Allen Yellow Jackets out of the Tampa area and Tampa Technical High School. Coach, you go in, recruit so much from one school alone. How have you watched all of their chemistry translate to the collegiate level? Well, it's, 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 they were good in high school. Um, I, I have a relationship with a coach, Coach Jay. Uh, coach Jay told me he had some guys down there that were, you know, looking to play college football. They wasn't getting recruited heavily. And I went down and I went to look at David. And then I saw Jaden. Then I saw Armand. Then I saw a couple other cats I like. There's some guys on the defensive side of the ball I like too. And I thought that what a better opportunity to get, you know, some guys, especially your quarterback, who has some of his receivers to bring along with him. You know, the interesting story about um, Jamal Jones is that I didn't recruit Jamal Jones. David Wright recruited Jamal Jones. I, I called him, and he was supposed to come up on his visit, and he bought Jamal Jones with him. And I told him, I said, he said, well, I'm going to walk around. And Jamal gave me his film. And without the two seconds of watching that film, I was like, yes, sir. I don't know what's the bruise on this peach. I got to figure out what's wrong. And, and the, the, the rest is history. He here with us. And Jamal does his things. He's been having, you know, because he was such an elite player last year, I think a lot of people have focused in on Jamal, which has allowed Amon and the rest of those guys to get some burn and do some things that they can do. Such an elite group of receivers. And the guy who gets them all those touches and all those touchdowns is sophomore quarterback David Wright III. We'll take a short break here on Yellow Jacket Football and return with QB1 on the other side, right back here on Yellow Jacket Football. Welcome back in to Yellow Jacket Football. I'm Kay Crenshaw, now joined by sophomore quarterback David Wright III. David, first off, thanks so much for sitting down with me this week. Let's dive into your season. First, though, go back to last year. 2,500 yards through the air, 24 touchdowns. You were the top passer in the SIEC. And so far this season, through three games, you've picked up right where you left off. But what's the biggest difference you see in yourself as a sophomore compared to a true freshman? that I have experience from last year. I have way more experience than last year. We becoming a team and the offense is just not getting rolling. How much has that experience helped you in the preparation week to week, knowing not only just the talent you're gonna be stacked up against, but what you have to do to be best prepared for your upcoming opponents? I have to be well prepared because last year, I didn't know who I was going against who I was playing against. This year I have an idea of who I'm playing against and who I'm going to be going against. Well, the experience is the first difference maker. The second big change though, the jersey swap. You traded in three for number one. Coach calls you QB1 all the time. Why the switch? Well, that's the number I wanted last year, but it was a senior in front of me who, who, who had it. Then we switched, we came to agreement and switched the numbers. So number three to number one, you feeling comfortable in number yeah. one so far? I felt comfortable in number three, but I feel more comfortable in number one. Saturday was a great game for you. 373 yards through the air, three touchdowns. You added another on the ground. We've touched on you being a great passer, but your run game adds a different dynamic to this offense. As a quarterback, how do you balance that in determining of I'm just gonna keep it and run here or try to escape the pocket? I don't feel like I'm much of a runner, but I can run and uh, work the defense out, but I'm much of a pocket passer to myself. Well, this season you've completed 61% of your passes. You're coming up on 1,000 yards for the year. What's allowed you to find so much success early on? The connection that we have between our receivers, playing with them for a long time and just practicing with them, making it good. Two of those receivers who are leading the charge for Allen this year, Armani Harris 
and Jaden Horace. Your two top receivers, but they're also two faces you've known for quite some time, all coming out of Tampa Technical High School down in Florida. What did it mean for you to carry over, not just the relationship, but you touched on it there, the chemistry from playing on the Friday Night Lights to the collegiate level? It just still feels the same how we did in high school. I've known them much longer than high school, so our connection has just been there always, but it just feels the same. As a quarterback, knowing your receivers, you know their moves, you know maybe, oh, if he's going to go on this route, this is his out move. As a quarterback, how comfortable does that make you feel, not just knowing your receivers through practice, but knowing them as long as life? It makes me very comfortable because I know when a play is going to break down, I know I can count on one or the other to be there. A great season for David so far as Allen rolls into week five of the 2022 season. David, coming into this year, what were some of the biggest goals you set for yourself? To be more of a leader to the offense and being able to manage the game well. It's an exciting time for Yellow Jacket football. He's sophomore quarterback David Wright III. We'll be back on the other side with head coach Teddy Keaton. We return to Yellow Jacket football. Back on Yellow Jacket football, rejoined by Allen head coach Teddy Keaton. Coach, like you said it, QB1, David Wright the third. he's a special player. He's the leader of your team, one of your team captains. Just what does he mean to the overall progress of this program across his next four years? I don't like to say a player is, is, is everything, but he's one of those guys that contributes and adds value to our program. I think the success we're having on offense single-handedly belongs to a guy who can distribute the ball the way he is. I've always believed in college football, pro football, mini mic football, any football you want to be. If you don't have a quarterback, it becomes a long day for you to have, be, be able to win, which is interesting on this side. We're 0-3 right now, and the success that we're having doesn't seem like it's coming out to be wins. But the success we're having is leading them to prepare for wins. Um, I think QB1, I, I, I think the most interesting thing is how they still come to practice. Yesterday we practiced really good. I was very excited about practice. Everybody's still locked in. Most 0-3 teams with a bunch of freshmen and sophomores will be in pack their suitcase, be like, the season is over with, not them guys. That means they love football. They're out there playing. They're working hard. They're doing the things they need to do. And that's a credit to their leadership as him, Richard Hayes, those guys are really putting in work on both sides of the ball to keep their teammates focused on what we're trying to accomplish here. Well, we turn our attention to this week's opponent on Saturday where Allen will play host to Central State. Coach Kevin Porter returns to the SIAC, his first year leading the Marooters. What are your early impressions from them from film? They're throwing the ball a lot. Oh, they're throwing the ball a lot. They, they got some bigger players. They got a lot of transfer guys. Um, I think they're going to pose a little bit of a challenge because we have an area that we need to get better at and we need to get better at fast. Uh, we don't want it to be a shootout. We want it to be a game that we can go in and do some things and um, and we, we, we can only control that. And I think each week they've gotten better in the back half of our secondary. So it's going to be a real challenge for our guys. I have a tremendous amount of respect for Coach Porter. He was the head coach of the Fort Valley um, Wildcats at one point in time who won a conference championship in this conference. So he has the pedigree to know how to win a championship. He know what it takes to go through this gauntlet of you know, games to be able to get to that point. Um, so it's going to pose a challenge for us. we got to go out and be ready to play because he's a really good football coach, especially a great defensive coordinator. One of the biggest changes so far this season, while he's a great defensive coordinator, it's been the offense of Central State. Last year, 11 points a game. Coach, this year, they're averaging 25 points through their first four contests. What do you think has contributed to such a big turnaround? I think the quarterback, they have a really good quarterback. They have a really nice set of nice, good receivers. Um, I think they, they like to get the ball in those guys' hands and try to let them make plays. Um, I, I think they're doing a really good job. I think Coach Porter did a really good, really good job of recruiting, um, fix, filling in some holes that were there from last year. I think they were a really good team last year. They just didn't get a chance to develop into the team that they needed to be. Uh, now I think you're starting to see some of the work over the last three or four years come to fruition now. 
Well, the defense will have their hands full. Come Saturday against a talented Central State offense. Mm -hmm. Coach, for your offense, you're going up against a team, like you said, at Coach Porter. He's known for his defensive mentality, played in the NFL, and now he's brought that to the coaching ranks and back into the SIAC. What challenges will your offense be stacked up against? I don't, my offense don't play against other people. We play against ourselves. We talk about doing the things that we need to do, the level of execution that we need, move the ball the way we need to move it. Nobody stops us but us. We have a saying around here that nobody beats the Yellow Jackets but the Yellow Jackets. If we go out, we perform, we do what we do, we execute, they're just another team over there we're playing against. Well, let's focus on your team. What's the injury report heading into this weekend? We're healthy. We're pretty good. We're, you know, we got a few nicks and bobos that comes in the course of a game or a season, but overall we still, we're, we're really good in the health department. And that's an area we don't highlight too much is the strength and conditioning staff for your group because week in, week out, especially as you're starting to dip into the month of October, football season is a gauntlet, especially the opponents you've been stacked up against. Talk to me just a little bit about the impact that your conditioning staff has made on this season, how vital they are to the success of your program. I have to go all the way back to when we started. I had a great guy named Kerry Thompson. Kerry Thompson came in. He set the foundation of our strength and conditioning program. He's went on. He coaches fanfare football now. So he's doing a really good job in his thing. Then we hired another guy named Irvin. Coach Irv. Irv did a really good job at working on the soft tissues, the fundamentals, the movement things. And then now we move on to this next guy, Coach Up. Coach Up has kind of carried that along. Um, you know, we're doing things in a good way. Um, Coach Irv left us and went to a Power Five, um, Cal Berkeley. Um, and now we got Coach Up that came from Mississippi Valley. Uh, he was at Western Kentucky, and he's doing a really, really good job of getting those guys bigger, faster, and stronger. I think that whole department just holds a hand at what they're doing, and I think a lot of success that we're having to be able to maintain the, the stamina to play all those, you know, quarters and playing against, you know, we played against the top 10 team in the country. We played against one of the top programs, Fort Valley's 4-0. We just played against another team that had just come off of a win of a Gulf South team, and we lost one game by two points. We lost the other game by eight. So, I mean, that all is accredited to their ability to keep them bigger, faster, and stronger, and to be able to build the stamina for them to be able to last as long as they did in those games. You've been this close to your first win this season. Like you said, a combined 10 points in the last two weeks has been the difference. Heading into Saturday against Central State, what will be the biggest key to closing that gap and getting your team over the hump? Finishing. I think if we can finish and we can put teams away early, I think we start slow sometime when we get the ball. If we can figure out a way to start. If you look at the stats in the second quarter, we dominate people. That, that's where we really dominate. But we need to start dominating early in the game. And if you look at the fourth quarter, both all teams are pretty much, you know, seven points here, this here. We just need to get better faster. Um, that's offense and defense and special teams wise that we don't go out and give spot people 21 points and then play from behind. I think we need to be able to play ahead. I don't think we've played ahead not at all this year. He's Teddy Keaton, Allen head football coach as the Yellow Jackets will play host to Central State in SIEC action this Saturday with a 6 p.m. kick from Westwood High School. For all of us here at Yellow Jacket Football, I'm Kay Crenshaw. We'll see you next time.